Hi everybody, how is going? I hope you are all well and safe. And today I've got a very exciting topic for you. We're gonna break down the advanced encryption standards algorithm and look at every step in detail using a real example. So without further ado, let's go. In advanced encryption standards, we can use three different types of keys of different lengths. The first one and the shortest one is a 128-bit key. That looks like this. We have a 192-bit key. The longest one is 256-bit key, which may look like this. In this video, just for simplicity, because we just want to understand the logic of the encryption, we will focus on a 128-bit key. First of all, we need to understand the high-level encryption steps, and then we're gonna go through each step in detail. The first one, we will generate the initial key 0 for the round 0. The initial key 0 will help us to derive the subsequent 10 keys for the rest of the rounds. The third step is we will add the round key, then we're gonna substitute bytes, shift rows, mix columns, add round key, substitute byte, shift rows, add round key. Let's break down these steps into the main stages. The third step is what we can call an initial round. Uh, steps 4, 5, 6, 7, we will call the main round. That are repeated nine times in this particular encryption algorithm. And the final round is steps 8, 9, 10, which are basically the same, only without the step of mixed columns. In this slide, we are going to generate the initial key 0 for the initial round. As I said, we are using the 128-bit key. For simplicity, it looks like this. This is K128-bit key. We represent it as a block 4x4 four four moving from up to down. So it looks like this. Then we have to convert these values to the hexadecimal values. The table for conversion you can find online anywhere. But for simplicity and for convenience, I linked it in the description below. Uh, so this becomes 54, 48, 49, 53. This becomes this, this becomes this, and this becomes this. So we have converted to the hex values, and we have our initial key 0. This step is quite simple. Let's move on to the next one. Now we will generate the sub-key 1 for round 1 of the encryption algorithm. In order to generate the sub-key 1, we need to take the last column of the initial key 0 and apply the rotword function. We simply move around these bits in the following manner. The, the, top one goes, the top one takes the place of the last bit, the second one takes the first place, the third one takes the second place, and the fourth one takes the third place. Now we perform the sub-byte operation. This is done based on the SBOX table, which I will link in the description below. But it looks like this. For example, we have to substitute the 4B value using this table. We just look up the first element 4 in the column, in the column X and find the intersection with the second value B. It gives us B3. As a result, we get these values, b3, 6e, cb, and 20. Now we use this column to derive column 1 of subkey 1. All we have to do is to perform the exclusive OR operation with the first column of the initial key 0 and with the round 1 column of the ARCON table. The ARCON table is a pretty fine table that looks like this. As you can see, in this table we have 10 columns for 10 rounds. In this round, as we are deriving the subkey 1, we use the first column for the round 1, which is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So if you do not know how to perform the exclusive OR operations, I will explain it in the next slide. Now we are going to perform the exclusive OR operation between these values and these hexadecimal values. Uh, first of all, we have to convert them to the binary values using the tables available on the internet. I will link also in the description below. 
So B3 becomes 1011011, 6E becomes 01101110, CB becomes this value, and 20 becomes this. 54 is 01010100, 48 is this, 49, and 53. Performing the XOR operation is quite simple. What we do is we compare this value to this value, and if they are different, we put 1. In the next one, so here 1 and 0 are different, so we put 1. 0, 1, different, we put 1. 1, 0, 1, 1, 1 are similar, so we put 0. 0, 0, similar, so we put 0. 0, 1 is 1, 1, 0 is 1, 1, 0 is 1, and so on. I think you got the logic. So I will just click here. <laughs> Dividing this binary stream into the 8 bits, we can convert them back to the hexadecimal values. This one is E7, the second one is 26, the third one is 82, and the last one is 47. For the rest of the video, we will just use the XOR calculator because we don't want to spend our time for this manipulation that we already know about. We have just successfully performed the XOR operation between these two values. And the result is this, E7, 26, 82, and 47. We need to perform another XOR operation with the first round column of the Rcon table. And the result will be E6, 26, 82, and 47, which will successfully become the first column of the subkey 1. Now we can use this first column of the subkey 1 to derive the second column. For this, we take the first column of subkey 1 and the second column of the initial key 0 and perform the XOR operation between them. And we get this result AF75, C9 and 66, which becomes the second column of the subkey 1. The second column in return will help us to derive the third column by performing the XOR operation with the third column of the initial key 0. And we have the third column of subkey 1. Congratulations! And in the same way, we use the third column of subkey 1 and perform the XOR operation with the last column of the initial key 0 to get column 4 of the subkey 1. Ta-da! Now we have generated the subkey 1 that will be used for round 1 encryption. After we have successfully generated the subkey 1 for round 1, we have to derive all the rest keys for round 2 to 10. In the same way, I will not be repeating the same steps, but basically to derive the subkey 2, you take the last column of subkey 1, perform the root word, sub bytes operations, and exclusive OR operations with the column 1 of subkey 1 and the round 2 column of Archon table. So you derive all 10 keys in this way. Assuming you have generated all 10 subkeys, we can move on to the next slide. Let's recap what we have done so far. First, we generated the initial key 0 generated 10 subkeys, and now we are at the initial round of the encryption process. We will add round key in the next slide. Adding round key 0 to plain message. This is quite interesting. Here we actually have a message which is in plain text. Let's say the message is I love cucumbers. Cucumbers. I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> the same way as we did previously with the encryption key, we represent the message in the block of 4x4. Now we convert them to the hexadecimal values to get this result and perform the exclusive OR operation with the initial key 0. You already know how to perform the XOR, so I will just show you the result. It will be this little table here. Substitute bytes step is quite simple. We take the results from the previous step and based on the S-box table, we substitute the bytes. The result will look like this. And now we use this result table to uh, perform the shift rows operation. What we do is we simply shift rows to the left. The first row we don't shift or you can see we shift by zero cells. The second row we shift by one cell to the left. The third row we shift by two cells to the left, and the last row we shift by three cells to the left. 
to get this result. What happens to the rest of the values? They simply move in the same order as in the initial table. Okay, good. So to perform mixed columns, we take the results from the previous step and multiply it by the predefined matrix, which will give us a set of values. For now, let's call them A1, A2, A3, A4, and so on. The way we multiply the hexadecimal values by the matrix, we multiply each value of the first column uh, of the hexadecimal values by each value of the corresponding row of the predefined matrix. So to get A1, the equation is as follows. We multiply A4 by 2, then we perform the XOR with the, with the product of 47 and 3, XOR with the, F, with the product of F0 and 1, and XOR with the product of 67 and 1. In the same way, to derive the A2, we take the first column of our block and multiply it by the second row of the predefined matrix. To get the A3, we take the first column of our block and multiply it by the third row of the predefined matrix. And in the same way, to get the A4, we multiply the first, we multiply the first column by the last row of the matrix. In the next slides, we will see in detail how to solve these equations on the example of A1. Let's take a close look at the first equation, in particular at the first element, which, which is the multiplication of A4 and 2. First of all, we need to represent these values as binary values. Now, A4 multiplied by 2 can be represented as following. To better understand, let's represent each value in each separate cell. And let's identify the sequence number of each character. Starting from the right to left, we have 0, 1, and then we have 1, 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This will help us to construct the polynomial equation, which will look like this. The way it works is anywhere where there is a 1, we put x to the power of the sequence number. So in this case, as the sequence number 7 has a corresponding value of 1, we put x to the power of 7 plus we skip 6 because it has a value of 0. The corresponding value for sequence number 5 is 1, so we put x to the power of 5, plus skipping 4 and 3, we have x to the power of 2 multiplied by x to the power of 1. So after we expand the brackets, we get the equation of x to the power of 8 plus x to the power of 6 plus x to the power of 3 which we can convert back to the binary equivalent. So we write down the sequence number, and x to the power of 8 means we put 1 in the sequence number 8. We do not have the power of 7, so we put 0. For the 6, we put 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Now we have the result of this little operation. But as you can see, it is more than 8 bits. If you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we have 9 symbols, which is more than 8 bits. So we need to reduce them to 8 or less than 8 bits. The way we do it is we perform once again the exclusive OR operation with this number here 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. We take the first number and the second number, and the result is 0010, which, if you look up in the table, equals to, the fifth, equals to 53 in hexadecimal values. So we can put here 53. Now let's solve the 47 multiplied by 3. Uh, it's quite simple. We just follow the same logic here, which will give us the 5c in hexadecimal values. F0 multiplied by 1 is just F0, as well as 67 multiplied by 1 is simply 67. Now let's perform the XOR operations between these values, which is 98 in hex values. This is just one example of how to derive the A1. You can find the rest of the values by yourself in the same way and move to the next round. And we have done everything 
So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and uh, I will see you in the next video. Have a good night.